Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Thank you for coming in tonight. I appreciate it. Hello replay viewers. Thanks for watching. And hello YouTube viewers. Thanks for stopping by as well. Uh, YouTube viewers, if you'd like to participate live in the chat, you can join me on Periscope. Download the app to your phone and search for Penguin and Fish. I'm here most nights, just about every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So hello, hello everyone, thanks for coming in. We are starting a new block tonight, Wild Roses by Pat Sloan, and I got all my fabrics picked out here. But I am gonna flip you around and we will get going here, guys. Hello, thanks for coming in everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, it's a rainy one here tonight, so if you hear any loud rainy stuff, it's it's the rain outside. I don't think it's been thundering yet, but I don't know. It's supposed to get a little bit more stormy tonight. But we're going to start Lock 68 of the Splendid Sampler. It is a cute little applique rose, like a wild rose. Uh, we're going to do ours in blue just because I have a bluish quilt and I thought the blue would actually be really pretty as a flower like this. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to start that tonight. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So thanks for coming in again, guys. You are the best. All right, I'm going to flip you around, and we'll get going. Let me know how your day was today. Alrighty, here we go. I am going to do the fusible version of this again where I'm using uh, the fusible web. It's a paper-backed fusible web. That's the important thing to look for. Uh, ooh, you got new fabric today. That's always a good day, Suda. <laughs> oh, did you get... Uh, oh, never mind, sorry. Uh, here we go. I am going to use um, these fabrics here. So we got five cute little petals, this little, uh, what did she call it? She called it something funny, or oh, ruffle, little ruffle thing. I wonder what that's really called in a flower. It's kind of just like the colorful part, uh, or the part that gets darker kind of right at the base of the petal. Maybe that's what that is. And uh, um, then the cute little center. Ooh, uh, how is the quilt show? That sounds like fun. Oh, you got it from an Etsy store. Two yards of my fabric. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> that's cool, Sue. Is that the, uh, the squares from the Serengeti Beasties? It was good. All right, that's good to hear. Quilt shows are fun. They're fun to go to. All right, so I am going to use... Oh, the dark blue is squares. Oh, nice. Okay, so I think this is going to be my background, a light background. Here, we can look at this at the same time. And my petals, I want to be, I think I'm going to do these two fabrics. These are the same, uh, it's from the same collection. These are fabrics that I found when I was going through my stash and, and added recently. Uh, I thought it'd be fun. Uh, two of the same patterns, but slightly different color. I thought that would that'd be fitting for the petals. Uh, and then that little ruffle, I want to do this crazy cloud. You'll barely see it, but you'll see a couple of these guys coming through. And um, some of these colors are like these two colors, so I thought it was pretty. Ooh, got your elephant quilt all stabilized. Uh, what does that mean? Do you mean like, um, like basted together? And then I thought this would be our center just because it's bright and flowery and cute. So that's the plan. But before we do that, we're going to prep all our pieces. So they are all right here. We need five of these shapes. These are our petals. C and D, that re represents the two different colors. So C and D, one or the other. I, I won't decide what I'll do. One of them is going to have three and one is going to have two. I don't know what I'm going to do for that yet. I'm just going to prep the pieces to start out. So these are in reverse already, which is what we want for this fusible raw edge applique look. I think I might hand embroider the, the edges with a blanket stitch. 
Oh, even painting and redecorating your living room? That is my plan for the weekend. Uh, I think we're gonna paint, we're gonna paint a wall, actually all the walls in our living room. We had a, a roof leak a little bit. Oh, the stitch in the ditch. Oh, okay. I might only use stitch on the ditch on, on this quilt. Uh, but we had a roof leak a little while ago and, and it's all fixed, but we have a, like a little stain on our roof now and that's how we found out that it was leaking in our living room. So we are going to, um, paint over that and then we have a whole plan. We're going to paint all the rest of our walls too and we're going to get a bookshelf to, like a, a low profile, like a skinny bookshelf to hang up on our entire wall, one wall. So our books... Well, that are scattered all over the place and dumped everywhere right now uh, will finally have a place they can all live together. And I am so itching to get those books in one place. Um, we're going to change it up. So we never repainted when we moved in here. Uh, you know, we had a, a rehab company, I think, redid our house. Uh, before we got it. And so we just have kind of like this kind of mauve cream, not even cream, I think mauve is <laughs> an appropriate, uh, an appropriate uh, name, you know, just a neutral, something that they would paint a house to sell it in, you know, it's kind of a mauve cream. And uh, we are going to paint most of the walls white. And we do have a reason for that. I'll get to that. But then uh, the wall, one of our walls is going to be black. So we want to paint the walls white because we end up doing a lot of like film shoot stuff. Or, and like, you know, we've done like kind of like, uh, you know, my husband does a lot of film related stuff and, you know, shooting short films. And that sort of thing. And, and, you know, we have friends over and sometimes we film them. And it just always seems that um, the living room ends up being like the perfect place to shoot video. But everyone, you know, they sit on the couch and then they have that weird mauve cream behind them, uh, which is super annoying. And I do like photo shoots. Like sometimes I set up the living room to take cute, um, cute product photos, you know, like in a scene. And it's just this mauve color is not working for us. So we figured white because that would work for every video thing we want to do. And it's just a nice neutral for any photography stuff I want to do. So that's, that's the white. That's why we're not getting too wacky there. Uh, but we decided to do a black wall opposite the couch. And <laughs> the start of that... Oh, from Ikea to make it in the corner bracket that makes a corner unit. Oh, that's cool. Um, we decided to do the other side black. Uh, and then we're going to, this is just so silly, but I'm totally in love with this idea. Uh, we're going to mount the TV on the wall there. And so since the TV is black, it'll just blend into the black wall and uh the tv will will be like a whole lot less pronounced in the room and then we'll hang like some bright art uh near it or something so <laughs> i'm kind of totally obsessed with the idea of this disappearing tv <laughs> so anyway that is that's the color plan and then i think uh we have the little um you know little mini you know, door area. What's that called? The little foyer. You know, it's literally the size of a door. Uh, but that I think we're going to do a pale gray. And we might also uh, paint the bathroom the same pale gray. Get mood kites. What are those? Oh, mood lights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to just make that TV, we're going to mount it on the wall, and then we're going to move all the, you know, DVD crap, we're going to hide that somehow, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll just hang that on the wall too, and that'll disappear in the wall on a, like a little black shelf or something. Um, and uh, I need to just trace five more, or three more of these guys, and then I will be done here.
I know the room is with color. Everything else is like cream. Funny. Yeah, I figure, I mean, we have lots of quilts and blankies and pillows and, and all that stuff is usually pretty colorful. So I'm thinking that's where we'll get our color. It'll just be a little more flexible for us. And then there's a lot of warm woods in, in that room. So it'll be like black and white and a warm wood color. But yeah, so we need to buy paint and measure and, and all that. Um, well, we'll probably, we'll probably measure tomorrow and do that. So guys, I am just working through getting all these applique designs traced. Um, I'm tracing on the smooth side of this paper. Uh, there's a rough side that's the fusible side and then the smooth side is what we can draw on. And I'm leaving space in between because I'm gonna cut these out of, of um, the paper first, and I wanna leave a little seam allowance, like at least a 16th of an inch or so. And I'm almost out of this paper. I'm not sure I'll be able to get another, another applique project out of it, but we'll, we'll see. I'll have to dig around. I think I have another brand, um, Heat and Bond. I think that's another brand of this, uh, fusible web, paperback fusible web, so I will I'll use that next time I'll have to find it. Using up stuff though, I always like that. All right, there we are. Here is our um, our five petals and then that little ruffle and the center. So let's get that cut out. I got my uh, paper scissors here and I'm gonna just roughly do this to get going just so I can get rid of that extra paper here. Trying to learn to sew on, the, on a sewing machine. Any tips to sew in a straight line? Well, that is something I am working on myself. You know, you'd think that would be an easy thing, but you know, sometimes the machine can just uh, pull kind of funny. But yeah, sewing on paper is a great idea. You can draw lines on paper, just a normal sheet of paper, like from your printer or photocopier. You can draw lines, like draw straight lines and draw curved lines and just try and move the paper with uh, the sewing machine and that'll be good practice. Or on a scrap piece of fabric, it's, it's fun, to, fun to get right to the fabric sometimes. All right, let's get all these pieces. This is the boring part of applique. I, I want to get to the paper or the uh, the fabric part. No problem. Ask any questions you like. All right. So I'm just first separating all these just because it'll be way easier to cut out. I suppose I'll cut this one as I separate it. But yeah, so we're going to, for the shelves, I mean, we just had a pretty bulky Ikea shelf here and it was really, it wasn't, we had to move it a lot for some of these film shoots that my husband was doing. And so it was full on both sides with books. And when he did that shoot, uh, we had to move all our books out from, from, from both sides. And now we're using that shelf for something else. So all of our books are scattered everywhere. And we have like a smaller version of that shelf, like one of those expedite shelves. And um, it was just too heavy for the room and it didn't hold as many books as what we needed it to hold anymore. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to get some of those alpha shelves from the container store where it's just, you have a, a rail at the top of your um, wall and then you hook these rods in that come down and then those rods, I think they're called standards, but then you can hook in like shelves and it's just a lot lower profile and we'll be able to fit all our books on that on this little wall when we when you walk in and just getting all those books in one place again and having this uh, shelf that's not so deep is going to open up our living room space and it's going to uh, open up all the rest of the house because all the books will be in one place again. So we're pretty excited about that. We we're going to install it ourselves, although I don't know if we're going to do that anymore just because I our walls have slats. Um, wait, is that what it's called? 
don't think they're called slats, where, where it just has behind the wall, it's just like tons of like wood, um, wood with little slats, or, or is that what it's called? I don't think I'm doing that right. Uh, but anyway, so it, it's really difficult to hang stuff and find a stud and, and all that. So I think we're just having somebody come and do it as part of the service studs. No, it, um, lathe and plaster, that's it. That's what our walls are. That's it. Ugh, it's the worst. When we first moved in, we hung a shelf with one of those and it, it was so difficult. We had to get a special drill and and you know, you don't know if you're in a stud and we dropped the shelf on my finger and my thumbnail fell off after that, which was the most horrible thing ever. Uh, so I'm not happy with the walls. <laughs> uh, that was not fun. So John was like, oh, I think that has the, the lathe and plaster and stuff. I thought it was just external walls, but he thinks the internal walls are like that too. So I'm like, screw it. We're getting the dude to come in here and do this because I'm not, um, I don't like the idea of um, doing that with a shelf that are, that's going to have all of our books on. So it needs to for sure be done right. Anyway, so that's our weekend too. <laughs> uh, I look forward to it being done, but just the idea of moving all our crap and painting just does not sound appealing. John doesn't seem to think it's going to be such a big deal though, so that's good. I'm going to rely on that. All right, so let's uh, get these on paper. Oh, you have the same walls. Yeah, our, our house is from 1946, and those are the walls that they came with. Yeah, not fun. And, and the crappy thing is, too, that we have to paint the ceiling. <laughs> Although John is uh, very tall, so um, he won't mind. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll for sure, uh, well, maybe we'll do like a little tour <laughs> when we're done. You know, the theory is that we're going to be done on Saturday, although we won't go, we'll be done with the painting then, but we don't have the shelves yet. We have to order them. Okay, so I'm going to press these onto the wrong side of the fabric. Uh, the other day I did it on the right side, which, which sucked. Let's try and find a place where we can use a little scrap. So this is that center piece here. This is a perfect scrap for that. Um, so I have the iron heated up. I'm just going to hold it there for about 10 seconds or so. Oh, yeah, you know what? We should take some before picks. Oh, there was something the other day that I forgot to... Oh, when we before we cleaned the basement, I was going to take before picks, and I forgot. Um, but, yeah, I should take some before <laughs> pictures. Uh, so we won't have the shelves yet, though. And we want to get... We want to see if we can find some old barn wood for the actual shelves. So we aren't going to get like the alpha shelves that, you know, come with it. Uh, we're going to just get the things that hold the shelves and then um, try and find some reclaimed wood uh, just to warm it up. And we have other wood stuff in the living room. So that's the plan. None of that's figured out except for the paint and the shelves, neither of which we have. <laughs> So an actual after may not be uh, for a few weeks or a month or two months or who knows. But at some point, our living room will be a nice place. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'm going to cut this out right away, I think, so we can see how we're doing. I'll go down here so you don't have to look at my ugly uh, ironing board. We're going to paint it white, black, and gray. So I was talking about this a little bit earlier. There's a plan. Yeah, that's a lot more than what we usually have. So we do a lot of photography stuff in the living room. So that's kind of why we're painting the walls white. And then we're going to have one wall that's black, uh, just because I think it'll look cool like as an accent wall. Plus, we're going to mount the TV on that wall, and that'll make the TV just kind of disappear as <laughs> well. <laughs> what the plan is, and the, I just thought that was kind of a fun idea. So when you're cutting this out after you've pressed it to the fabric, you got to really um, pay attention. This is your nice 
line that you want to cut directly on the pencil line, but it's this line that is going to be your final edge, so you want to make it pretty. All right, and there we go. Oh my goodness, I like there's a little blue flower right in the middle, which is going to go with all our other blue stuff. I did not plan that at all. I think that's just too cute. All right, let's try and take the paper off right away too. So I have my little stiletto. You can just take a needle or something else. Uh, this is actually just a, a turkey, uh, one of those things to put like legs together. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna just do an X in the middle. And if this comes off okay, then I know I pressed it enough. If it seems like, ooh, I might need to do it a little bit more. I think we'll be fine. If it seems like the, the sticky fusible is coming up with the paper, then you need to hold the iron there for a little longer. And mine's doing it a little bit, but I think not enough that it's not going to hold. I can still feel some that it, it went on the fabric, so that's, that's good. That's what I want. Whoop. This gets so staticky, this paper. But yeah, once we take the paper off, and this will be ready to fuse Ah, fuse to the rest of our design. So I'll just be able to set this aside until we're done. I'd like to maybe get to the point where we uh, can put this design on the back fabric tonight and then tomorrow we'll start stitching. We'll start stitching the edge down. I think I'm going to blanket stitch around, hand blanket stitch the edge this time. All right, let's do the next thing out, which is that little ruffle I'm going to use this cloud fabric. I think we'll just keep going one at a time like this tonight. It's kind of nice to do it in parts, I think. So this one doesn't have a right or wrong side, the fabric, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to just find a spot where it fits well. Ooh, like right there it fits perfectly. Great. Yep, my machine is at the shop. They, they actually called today, so I just need to go pick it up. So we might have the machine uh, back tomorrow, so that'll be nice. Um, although I think I might keep using the Singer, the old vintage Singer, for a little longer. Um, I do have to play with the tension a little bit, um, so we'll try that. But yay, yeah, I know, so we'll see. I'll go over there and see what they did to it, and uh, then that'll be ready to go again to, uh, we'll have two sewing machines in here for a little while. All right. Oh, your husband had, is that the doctors today, or had doctors today? Good, I'm glad you're working with me here too. Um, the old machine, uh, which is actually a newer machine than the older machine that I've been working on, uh, I brought it in to, to uh, the, uh, my sewing machine guy, which is, he's less than a mile from our house, like we can walk there in like, you know, six minutes. Uh, but not with the sewing machine, because that'd be really heavy. Uh, but there was a little, not a short in the cord, but if you had weight, uh, right where you plugged in the cord, right by the plug, if it was leaning one direction, it wouldn't go on. But if you flip it and it, you lean it the other direction, then, you know, everything matched up and it would turn on. So it was just a little electrical thing. Oh, my foot pedal shouldn't have been getting hot. Oh, I'm going to ask them about that too, because yeah, that foot pedal gets super duper hot. Oh, I'm for sure going to ask them about that. I bet you um, maybe all this, you know, maybe replacing the wire or... or or the cord, I mean, and, or whatever they did, maybe that'll that'll help it, but I'll bring that up to them. And then I just got it cleaned while it was there too. Will you hang any of your approach paintings? Uh, I don't know if I'll, I'll, if I'll hang them in the house. Uh, the first one we didn't, I didn't really finish all the way, which is fine. Um, I don't know if I'll finish any of them. Uh, the second one, we just started on Tuesday, so I'll have two more weeks to finish that up. Um, that could have been part of the problem, just the, the foot pedal heating up. I'm going to ask, for sure. Um, I don't know. I feel a little weird about hanging faces of other people in my house. I don't know. Does that seem weird? I don't know. I might hang it in, in uh, 
the basement where I'm gonna hang, like, a, where I'm gonna work. Like, I, I think I'm gonna set up, like, a mini painting studio in the basement, and, um, maybe I'll hang it up there. Um, hang them there. But I would, but I love the idea of, um, like, I just think it'd be fun if my husband and I tried doing portraits of each other or something like that. I'd love to do, you know, people I know. And mom, my mom even said that she's waiting for her portrait or whatever. So that I would do. Like, I would paint portraits of my family just for fun, which I think would be totally goofy. And, oh, God, just the, kind of the weirdest thing. It'd be weird to... Um, have them sit there and be staring at them back and forth. I think that'd be a little odd, uh, but but it'd be be cool. I think those I would hang in my house somewhere. You could just paint over it. it. It would be um. It would be hanging in the house as like a super funny quirky thing, um. Not a serious thing because I I don't know, the idea of painting a portrait and hanging it in my house is a serious thing. I, I don't think would work for me. Yeah, that's true. It, it wouldn't be weird. It would be like art and, and I'll hang it up for sure. At least where I'm, where I'm painting. Um, I don't know. You're right. You know what? If it turns out cool and it looks like an old neat portrait or something, maybe I'll hang it in the living room. I think we're going to have a bunch of art in the living room or we have, we have some already, but I think we're going to, um, hang it nicer and just just be more conscious and make it prettier and stuff and so maybe maybe it would fit in there that's true maybe it's better that it's an anonymous person I don't know I feel I feel like it for sure too so we'll see we'll see how it goes I did I did hang up um my first painting that I did, yeah, Duke something, uh, I did a painting, uh, my first painting that I did in the first, the beginning oil painting class, those apples, I don't know if you guys remember the apples, I hung that in, um, in the hallway right by our kitchen, it's the hall, it's, it's not really a hallway, it's the back door, uh, that goes between the kitchen and the basement, but I hung it there so you can see it. Oh, you remember the apples? Uh, I hung it there so you can see it when you're in the kitchen, which I think is kind of funny. I just taped it to the wall. I didn't really hang it. Uh, but <laughs> I thought that was fun. So I did hang one of the paintings so far. I'll define spots for the other ones. All right, let's do petals. So I need to decide. Oh, thanks. I need to decide if I want more light blues or dark blues. I'm thinking already I want three of the light blues because this just really pops off those light blues and it doesn't pop as much off of this medium blue. So I think we'll do three of these and two of these and these can be kind of like the backgroundy ones and uh, we'll do a couple of the three light ones in the front. So all right, I need to put three petals on this guy. These are both nice big fat quarters yet I haven't haven't done anything. Um, I just have like one little hexagon cut out of this, basically. And, and oh no, we must have used it for something else here. Okay, make sure I have the right side down again. I'm so paranoid about this now because that other time, uh, I think it was the last applique we did. I um, I put this on the right side of the fabric twice in one sitting after we had a whole discussion about it. You think you like this flock? You know, it's kind of funny. I didn't think when I started this blended sampler that I would like all these decorative, kind of pretty, flowery, like girly, t um, you know, I don't know. Girly is not a good word. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Just sweet. It just doesn't, um, it didn't seem like something I would like. I don't usually uh, do stuff in, in that si style when I'm thinking art-wise, which to me that's what this quilt is. It's an art project. Uh, but they have actually turned out to be some of my total favorites, these, um, these applique ones and the flowery ones and the super cute ones. All the ones that I would have guessed beforehand, I would have been like, yeah, I don't know. Those are my, totally my favorites. It's so funny and it, it's surprising to me every time every time I do them I'm like wow I really really 
love these. Yes, the, the bunny and the squirrel and all the flowers and, um, you know, the vase of flowers, like the number four one. I mean, that's one of my favorite ones. And it's just so funny. Like, I'm surprised at myself, basically, that I that I like them so much. <laughs> so that was a cool thing to learn um, on the Splendid Sampler. Oh, you thought I was going to be all piecing. So I had a little heads up on that, at least, because uh, I got to be one of the designers. Um, my black is black 11. And uh, when we were told what, uh, like, you know, what to what type of block to do for the um, the design or for the for whatever we're going to design we were told to kind of design in a category so i'm you know i have an embroidery company so i'm most known for embroidery so i was told do something with embroidery and so other people were probably told to do something with paper piecing and other people with you know applique and other just normal piecing so i did know that there were going to be all different types of stuff in the quilt beforehand. But that was, that's kind of neat. So I don't know if you guys know that, but the designers, um, let's do this other one right away. The designers got a, um, we were, we were open to, we were free to do anything we wanted design wise, uh, as long it had to inspire us. It had to be like about why we love quilting or our quilting story or something, uh, that makes us happy with crafting, you know, kind of that sort of thing. It should, revolve around that, the story of our block, and why we do the block. Uh, and then we also um, were told what genre to do it in, basically. So like like what I was saying, I, I, mine was part of the embroidery blocks. So um, that's why mine's an embroidery block. So whenever one comes up and it's applique or it's paper piecing, that person, that designer was most likely told, okay, do a paper piecing one. Which is great because then there's a variety in the whole entire uh, quilt or the process. And I'm like so grateful that all those different types of, um, of quilting and stuff is part of this because I feel like I'm so much better at everything and um, you know I wouldn't have needle turned applique or um, you know all that paper piecing I probably wouldn't have done that on my own but you know because it came up in the splendid sampler you know we have the opportunity and and more than just once yeah so I am so using you know this quilt as much as I can to be a learning experience and that's why I've done lots of different types of applique and, and, you know, I'm trying to, trying to learn as much as I can about different styles. I mean, lately I've just been doing this uh, raw edge applique, uh, but that's because I'm trying to get through the block as quick as I can. And this is a really quick method uh, of applique because I want to get through the blocks so I can, I, I have a pile of unfinished ones. I think I'm, I'm up, I'm still at at least 13 unfinished ones. It's probably more like 14. I don't know. I'll have to count them up again. But it's up there. And uh, by uh, these applique, these raw edge applique blocks, when they come up, oops, wrong scissors. Uh, there's some of the, if you do it this way with the raw edge applique and the fusing, using these uh, fusible webs. And, you know, if you just machine sew it on uh, when you're done, there are some of the fastest blocks we've been doing. And so whenever one comes up now, it's like my opportunity to get a block done quick and then try and make some headway on some of my unfinished ones. You have more unfinished than finished. Yeah. I hear you. But yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of people like that and a lot of people didn't start um, or are just starting now. And uh, if you are, if you are starting uh, later on it or just starting now, I would recommend, and this is what they recommend. Oh, you're a pro with Raj with all those elements, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, they recommend this, the, the um, people who started this Splendid Sampler. They say to start the block, the current block, the new block, because then you'll feel like you're with everyone else, especially um, 
Oh, you did the be brave. That's cool. Uh, but you'll feel like you're working on it with everyone else, which is really great because then you're caught up on the Facebook pages with everyone and um, all that. And then, you know, like, like I said with this, if you get it done early, then try another one. And the cool thing about that is that you can just choose, you know what I mean? You're not forced to do whatever block comes next. You can uh, do the current block and then you can uh, look at the, look through all the old blocks and be like, ooh, I want to learn how to paper piece. So then you pick a paper piecing one or like, oh, I just want to embroider today and you pick an embroidery one or man, that looks cute. Let's do that one. You get to choose, you know? So that's kind of a neat benefit of starting late. But yeah, I would definitely, um, <laughs> that's a good plan. Um, definitely start on the most current one. It's just neat to go on the Facebook page and see what everyone else is doing for it. I hope you feel better. Colds are no fun. I, I'm doing my best to, to, not, to not get one. <laughs> But it's just, uh, it's kind of getting to be that time of year again, which kind of blows. I've been working a lot lately and staying up a little later than I should, and I'm going to get that in check tonight. I'm going to just shower and go to bed after this, just because uh, I, I have a lot of work coming up, and I don't want to, um, getting sick through it would be a big problem, so uh, I need to be healthier for water, etc. So, trying to do that. But yesterday was that weird day because the power went out early. Oh, orange juice, lots of orange juice. Yum, orange juice sounds good. Eat some soup. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And, you know, this is going to be a book later, too. So, I mean, for sure, print them out. I think that's great. But if you, um, if the Splendid Sampler gets done and um, after the Splendid Sampler is over for a little bit, uh, they're going to take down all the blocks, I'm thinking. And then it's going to be, it's going to be turned into a book, all these, all these blocks. So that's a good way to keep it all together. Technically, I don't really need the book, right? Because I'm printing out all the patterns, but I don't know. I think it'll be a really cool memento of, of the project. So I'm going to get one. I think it comes out like fall next year. I'm not sure. I think that would make sense. Oh, man. I want soup like right now. That's awesome. Oh man, John made the best grilled asparagus today, and I don't know, the stars were aligned or something, because all he said he put on was olive oil and some salt and pepper, but there was something about these asparagus guys that were so <laughs> good. So we had, we had those in brats tonight. All right, this is our last petal, and then I will take the papers off. And I definitely think we have time to, um, to put this on our background fabric. Yeah, I th he had a little, our grill, we just got a new grill, because our old one bit the dust. Kind of bit the dust a long time ago, and <laughs> now it's just catching on fire, and it was scary next to our house uh, with all the fire. So we got rid of that one, and our new one came with like a flat area or just like um, a flat area with holes in it. And he just put those, put the asparagus right on there and kind of moved them around on there while the brats were cooking on the grill part of it. And it just kind of turned out perfect. We were either just really hungry or they turned out perfect. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so, oh, I gotta take all the papers off of here yet. Let's do that. Maybe it's just, oh, it's not asparagus season. That's an early, oh, earlier in the year thing. Huh. Very good. All right, I 
think enough is getting on this. So we have been stitching, uh, once we get this all fused, we've just been stitching it down with the machine lately just to get things done quicker. But I don't know, I've been kind of feeling um, like I need to do something different with it. Oh, I love Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I think we actually have some of those in the fridge. Well, those are so good on the grill too. If you just put it in like a tin foil thing and just put some olive oil and garlic and stuff on. Yum, we'll have to do that. Um, oh man, this is just annoying how they flop on you. Um, I forgot what I was talking about with this. Oh well. Nah. Nighttime brains kicking in. Alright. Oh, that's a pretty, pretty blue one. Dark blue one. So staticky. Oh, see, now this one, uh, it's kind of pulling off quite a bit. So I'm just going to throw that up on the iron. You know what? I'm going to just lay the iron on it. I don't know. I've never really done it before while I get this one started. Oh, she'll only eat broccoli roasted. That's funny. All those vegetables are so good on the grill. All right, I think um, I just press this a little bit more. Hopefully it's good. We roasted cauliflower and stuff on the grill too, and that's just all that like flour, cauliflower and broccoli and all that's really good. Half of your meat paper, this is annoying. So now on these ones, I might have put it on a little too much because the paper is not wanting to come up at all. But I think, I think that's better than it not being on enough. Would you eat only broccoli and soup? Oh, funny. Oh yeah, we do that too in the oven, the Brussels sprouts and all those veggies. We have two lone little uh, acorn squash left from our garden. Uh, so we'll have to cook those up. I think it's getting a little cold. It doesn't seem to be making any more, um, any more acorn squashes in there. Oh, scratch all the way to the edge. All right, we'll do that. We'll just do a bigger X. That's working. Working real well. Oh, so we went uh, to my painting teacher. Uh, she had a gallery show today and, and she talked at it. So we went to that this afternoon and it was just so cool because I haven't seen any of her uh, work in, in real life. And it was just so cool. Uh, I would have loved to get one, <laughs> actually. Uh, there was two that we really, really, really loved. But she did a, it was a combined show that was just still all her work, but she had landscapes and abstracts there. And a lot of times they kind of felt like they went together, like they, um, like you should, like as a diptych, like you should hang them next to each other even. Or they came from the same source material uh, but one was done abstractly and one was, um, more, look more, you could tell it was a landscape. Her landscapes are pretty loose any, anyway in abstract, but, um, uh, it was really cool seeing the real abstract one next to ones where you could still tell that it was a landscape, like with trees and stuff. But when they were next to each other, they just went together perfectly. It was kind of cool. It was really nice. But yeah, I'm excited for Tuesday. I want to get painting again. I'm definitely going to have to figure out how to fit that into my life because I'm going to be sad when that class is over. <laughs> That's been like one of the funnest new things I've done this year is, is taking that um, painting classes. 
it's kind of it was kind of one of those things that was always in the back of my head like oh it'd be cool to know how to oil paint because that's like one of those like mysteries you know like all those masters painted in oils and and all that you know so it's always always in the back of my head and I'm just so happy that I did it like I'm I'm really really loving doing it and I'd love to do it more often painting on ooh glasses that's cool we painted um for Christmas one year we painted uh we got mugs from the Value Village here, which is basically like like a Goodwill. We picked out like really fun and funky mugs, and then we got some of that paint from the art store that you can paint, uh, like you can draw with the paint, and then you just put it in the oven and it and it cooks it basically. Yeah, bigger than an oven and a dishwasher stay safe exactly. So that, and then we just drew fun stuff on all these uh, thrifted mugs like personal to the people that we were giving them to and I still think that was a fun idea I would do that again <laughs> it was just so simple and fun and I had a good time all right we got all our pieces cut out here I'm having good trouble they're all stuck to me it's all staticky but all right let's let's get them down I think we're we're done cutting it out uh so Let's just move these out of the way. I'm going to bring the iron over here. And you know what? I am going to take my um, six inch ruler and I'm going to just mark on here. Since I don't have my cutting board or anything out, I'm going to just mark on here. Oh gosh, this is a big piece of fabric too. Hold on. Let's undo it all the way. There we go. I'm going to mark on here a six and a half inch square uh, and then I'll just trim around it and then when we're done I'll I'll have kind of where my cutting line will, will be and it'll help us frame up our um, our little flower so okay I'm gonna use this little scrappy area of it I'm gonna cut I'm gonna just draw it on here and then um, when I cut, I'm going to cut a little bit bigger. Uh, and then I'll, um, when we're finished with the whole thing, I'll cut it down. So I'm just grabbing my water soluble marking pen. I'm just going to draw around the edge. Quickly. OK, so there we got our little square going. It's a little difficult to see, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, let's lay this out. So I'm going to just use this as a guide. I mean, we, we have it here too. So uh, there's a couple, like this one and this one, look like they're farthest behind. Like they, both of these have petals that are overlapping them and they don't overlap any petals themselves. So I think I'm going to put those, uh, I think I'm going to put the dark blue ones for for those. So I'm going to just start eyeballing this. Now really you could trace this on, you know what, why don't we do that? We haven't really done that ever. I'm going to throw this, and this is a nice white fabric that is easy to see through. So you know what, let's just throw that behind. And trace that right on. I think it'll go really quickly and then we'll we're going to place these perfectly then. So I'm just kind of roughly doing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just getting everything in general where they should be. And we'll dab this off later once we're done sewing and stitching the whole thing so we don't have these blue lines there still. Oh, you know what? They're color coded. They already wrote um, where the two different fabrics go on here. So let's let's take a look at that. I'm seeing C and D labels on uh, on this chart here. So, all right, there we are. 
There, you can kind of see it there. So, all right. Oh, she has two colors. Oh, I know, here are the three colors, and then the two opposite ones are down there. All right, well, let's, let's give that a try. So she has it right here. Right here. It's kind of helpful actually to draw it on like this with this particular one because um, then you can get the perfect circle for your petals and um, oh, this one's this one's behind and this one's behind as well and then this guy's on top of all of them. Scrunched in there. And then this guy is tucked under this one, but on top of this one. All right, so we, we can't really see our um, other bits here, but the other two, I think I can just look at this and figure out. So this just goes right in the center there. I'm just kind of noticing certain bloops kind of cut these are at these line bits so I've done that in the center and and this there too and I think that's looking pretty decent oh it looks so cute I'm totally loving it and then this guy just goes right in the middle there so cute oh my gosh see I these this is another one of those ones I just wouldn't have guessed I would have loved if I was just shown the splendid sampler um, all the blocks all at once but this is so pretty and textural and I'm really liking the fabrics we did here I'm gonna fuse this guy down so just laying the iron on top of there and holding it let's tack down this area over here too and now we're going through lots of layers um, of this feasible right now, so I want to make sure that the heat gets to all of them. I'm totally digging it. Oh, and you know what? I, I didn't cut out this fabric. I'll, I'll trim it to tonight. But yeah, we got all this done in, in one evening here, so I think tomorrow I might blanket stitch around the edge just because I haven't done any kind of hand stitching like that on an apathy block in a while. Um, maybe we'll find Maybe we'll use variegated floss again and find some colors that, that match match these petals. That would be kind of fun. All right, you know what? I think I'm not going to press anymore. Uh, I, I'm going to cut this out and um, you know, let's get the iron out of the way. Before we start stitching tomorrow, maybe I'll give it another press. Or actually, maybe I won't. Maybe, maybe I'll just uh, leave it like this. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking I won't tomorrow because why get the iron and everything else out if all I'm going to do is hand stitch something. That's the beauty of hand stitching. I don't have to get the machine out. I don't have to get the iron out. I don't have to get all the tools out. I just have to get the thread out and a needle. Okay, so, well, let's, let's make this pretty over here too. I'm not going to cut this out perfectly right now because um you know it might pull and move around as we stitch so i'm just gonna let this all be and then we will just use that as a guide later but i think this is like just the prettiest thing isn't it i am in love with it so funny like it just right when i fuse it down i'm like oh my gosh i totally am in love so all right there we are, guys. I'm going to flip you around, and tomorrow we will get started on all the stitching. Friday night stitching. So, all right, going to flip you around. Hello. Well, that went quick, and we got a pretty blue flower out of it. So fun. So here's kind of the size, so you can see, you know, next to a human <laughs> what it looks like. But I, I think uh, these blues were a, a good choice. I like that it's the same fabric uh, just in the same um, fabric collection. They're two of the same designs, just a different colorway, which I think is kind of fun. But there we are. So all right, guys, thanks so much for coming in again. This will go up on Penguin and Fish movies uh, within uh, a couple hours or so. 
uh, so it'll be up tomorrow morning. I am a blue lover too. It's, it's Yeah, the cloud fabric is just so silly. And here it looks really abstract too. You can't see any of the clouds, but it does bring in some of that orange and yellow and some of the blues. I think it's uh, looking fun. So, all right, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great Friday. I hope it's lovely. And uh, see you later. Good night, guys.